So in this video, we are going to be answering an analytics problem solving interview question. The question is, Uber Eats is considering expanding its restaurant product in Montreal, Canada. How would you test the impact and viability of this expansion before a full-scale launch? So I think the, the first part is understanding where are we as a business in this market? Um, so is it is it a new launch? Have we been there for a few years? Is it mature? Is it profitable? Um, so getting an understanding of, of where we are and, and then also getting an understanding of where do we want to go as an overall business in our different markets. Um, there's also a competitive landscape to consider. What competitors are, are present? What is their size of the market versus our size of the market? Um, and then also what is the demand from a, a consumer perspective? If it's a new product in the new market, do they know about us? Uh, have they tried similar products before? If we're mature, again, what is the size of the market? And um, are our users coming back more often than, than going to different products? Uh, are they price sensitive? Getting an understanding of, of our consumers is really important to, to understand what are our growth goals and, and how do we launch in this market. Amazing. I think that's a great uh, thought process over there. A few clarifying questions, just wanted to poke deeper. You did mention to understand a little bit more about the consumer behavior and what data points you will be collecting uh, to learn a little bit more or what kind of resource would you uh, consult to make sure you polish your understanding? Yeah, I, I would get a, a time... Um, okay, let me, let me restart that. I would look at the data on a week by week basis and a month by month basis and again if we have historical data we'll get a perspective if not we'll start this from scratch um but on a weekly basis for example i would want to understand how many new consumers are coming to the platform um a second perspective would be for consumers that have already ordered on the platform are they coming back how often are they coming back for both those cohorts i would want to understand how much money they're spending um, and so therefore you can create an analysis of uh, different groups of, of spending power, who's spending, uh, what cohort is spending the least amount, what cohort is spending the most amount, what cohort is ordering uh, fewer than the average, what cohort is ordering more than the average. Uh, and, and therefore we can create kind of targeted approaches to different cohorts. Um, what other data would I want to understand? Uh, maybe if we have a membership program, how many of uh, our consumers are, are paying for the membership? Uh, that allows you to understand, one, are people happy with the membership? Two, are we more profitable because of the membership? And what should the membership be offering? And then, if possible, try to get an understanding of uh, are, 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 are consumers also using our competitors? Why is that happening? Um, how can we differentiate ourselves for our consumers? What are they looking for in the product that we might not have that maybe our competitors have? And, and so therefore we can influence what the product is offering. Amazing. Yeah. And just also touch upon one thing that, uh, you mentioned around looking at the week over week or months over months data when we first launched in Montreal. Let's say in the, uh, in the third week of launching the new product, the new user number suddenly dropped 50%. So that's kind of the, the case you're given. Like, how would you go about like, uh, in investigating this type of issue? Yeah, I would want to get an understanding of uh, were we doing any promotions or marketing that might have stopped? I think especially when you're looking at new users that might not know a product, you, you tend to overinvest in, in marketing and promotions. Um, and so if that was the case, let's look at, can we continue marketing in a different way? Can we continue doing promotions? Uh, try to understand, do we stop this for financial purposes? Do we, uh, what, what was the cause of, of stopping a product like that? Um, if, again, I, I keep going back to competitors, but maybe our competitors give a better offering than what we're giving if, if we are continuing promotions. And so we need to make a decision of, do we match that? Uh, do we try to beat it? Do we keep doing what we're doing? Um, maybe there's a, a new competitor that came on the platform that wasn't there before, and so people are trying them. I think there's a, creating a hypothesis to what happened is, is important to test against. Mm -hmm. And typically when it comes to 
uh, new users that are that are dropping, then you know maybe there's also a, a situation where we've penetrated enough of the market that there are not there aren't as many consumers to go after after a certain period of time. I think in your example, three weeks is quite soon, but that might happen after three years. And so we would take a different approach to trying to grow the market. Mm. So when we talk about penetration, what are kind of the metrics or proxy metrics or information that would you use to guide your like investment into certain geographic area? Yeah, the, the first thing is uh, total addressable market, uh, also known as TAM. And so when we approach a market, typically we'll know what the TAM is going into it, which is why we're investing in getting into the market, uh, hiring people to, to, to sell into the market. Um, and so after a certain period of time, you can see what is the revenue being generated compared to the TAM. And so if that's a very high number compared to the TAM, then we think that we penetrated 80% plus of the market um, versus you know, if there's still 50% of, of the market to go after, then uh, then we know that there's still a lot of growth left to do. Mm. From I think revenue is a great uh, point for learning about TAM. Any other, just in the Uber East business, any other metrics or aspect that you would think can be considered as part of the uh, total addressable market beyond revenue? Yeah, the, the number of users is important. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously the users generate revenue, but um, if, if we think that we can still get uh, growth from, from the number of users, then, then that's an important metric. Um, again, I'll go back to membership being an important piece of the puzzle because you can get new users, but if they're not coming back, so retention, uh, is a very important metric, then, then we want that to happen. And then also, generally, a business wants their users to be spending more money over time as well. And so looking at, you know, eBreeds, for example, they started their business with restaurants on the platform, and then they've grown to a new product in groceries and retail um, and, and different uh, things that they can deliver to, to uh, their customers. So by giving uh, a new product and new vertical, then they're allowing the consumers to spend a bit more money and purchase more things through their product. Mm, amazing. Thank you so much, Luca. So now we're going to reflect on the answer that Luca just did for the analytical problem solving question. So this analytical problem solving question, it's around growth and strategy. If you're applying for roles that are growth analytics or relate to strategy team, they might want to assess your ability to make decision or recommendation on example like market expansion or improving on some operational strategy in certain area. One thing that I do want to share that Luca did super well is in the beginning, he shared his approach to this question, as well as listed detailed potential area that he could look into to answer this question. For example, he shared we should be learning and looking into competitors landscape, as well as the behavior of our consumer. Those are definitely great points of when we are thinking to expand our market or grow certain product in certain market. In addition, Luca also showcases his domain knowledge. When we talk about metrics and when I ask additional follow-up question about being specific to what metrics he would look at, he did mention a lot of relevant metrics that are Uber Eats or food delivery domain or industry are generally interested in, for example, either retention or the membership percentage. Like those are definitely some of the key metrics that Uber Eats or other company relate to the food delivery industry wanted to grow. So he definitely demonstrated in his answer about his domain knowledge and expertise. If you are applying to a different domain or industry than the one you are currently worked at, you might want to consider to either read the company's earning if they're public or just do a research around what kind of metrics and information that this industry are particularly benchmarking on. That will help you to be more relevant to the company and the role that you're applying for. 
Other things you might want to consider is whenever you get a question like analytical problem solving or growth and strategy question, in the beginning, before you even share your approach, you might want to ask additional clarifying question. For example, in this case, you might want to ask an interviewer of, so what does restaurant product mean in this case? Or have we expanded to other cities in Canada besides Montreal? What are these, some of the learning in Canada we can already leverage? So those questions will be super beneficial to guide the thinking of the interviewer and also showcasing to the interviewer that you are a person who can ask clarifying question and to really define the scope of the problem a little bit more clearly. Thanks, Luca, for your answer. If you are enjoying this video, be sure to check out Exponent Complete Data Analytics Interview Preparation Course. Analytical problem solving questions are one of the toughest questions candidate may get stuck. You can watch more mock interview like just this one. Please visit tryexponent.com. Good luck on your next interview.